Every day that dawns, the driving force of climate change gathers pace, and we are responsible. Those are the facts, such as the near-unanimous verdict of climate science. And the effects, they say, can be seen all around us. Oh my gosh, it's another killer tornado. But there has been next to no progress on international efforts to slow the process down. The last time world leaders met was five years ago at the exhaustive near fiasco of Copenhagen. I now declare the meeting closed. The conference ended with no binding agreement, and since then, climate-related disasters have cost the world an estimated $490 billion, with a loss of 112,000 lives. Sunday's climate marches demanded action, but what hope is there for progress, especially when the leaders of developing giants, China and India, amongst others, are said not to be going. The commitments that they are going to put on the table won't be enough to stop the climate from the temperature from rising beyond two degrees. Governments should not take a back seat. They have a role. Scientists say the greenhouse gases that blanket the earth and keep the heat in are at higher levels than at any time in the last 800,000 years. And that's tipped the delicate balance of the atmosphere. And over a very short period of time, ocean and surface temperatures have increased, there's more extreme weather, and sea level rise is a direct threat to coastal cities, communities and industries everywhere. Sea level rise is already taking its toll. For island nations in the South Pacific, it's become a matter of plain survival. We are threatened with the very existence of, of our country, our culture, our tradition, our language, our future. The fact that we lie just two meters above sea level and that a failure to achieve a two degree limit on the warming issue is, is spelling the end of these small island countries is what's driving us now. It is of course at the front lines of global warming where the need for action is most keenly felt. It's hoped the summit will give impetus to global negotiations, leading to a universal agreement on how to reduce emissions in Paris in just over a year from now. Given past performance, that is a tall order. Nick Clark, Al Jazeera.